The BR District is wrapping up another year, the second which has featured the lack of an elementary and middle school. The Mitchell School roof collapse of 2015 left 1,900 students and 200 teachers without a home. And Derek Swenson and his staff have been commended for their short-term transitions, the focus now shifting to the need for long-term solutions. On the outside, it appears that things are going smoothly, but a careful examination inside the various buildings found several significant flaws. The situation has become dire enough that it caught the attention of the Massachusetts School Building Authority, which is seeking to conduct a feasibility study on permanent solutions for the district. The study will need funding from the town, and taxpayers are expected to vote on whether to fit the bill later this spring. Reorganizing certainly has its price, and the price is the um, space constraints that we have here in the building. Principal Nancy Kirk has seen the cost of reorganizing firsthand, and her school seems to be paying the steepest price. At this point, we have over a thousand students in this building, and um, when you're mixing four through seven, that's a big, big wide range of um, age, and it presents its problems. Literally every space is now occupied at Williams Intermediate School. Much of that newly created space is not properly equipped to house students. It was not designed to house four people um, as a, an office for four people and a pull-out room for special education students. Was not, that's not what it was meant to be. This certainly was not the only room we found to be undersized. The junior boosters have worked over the last five years, along with parents and community members, to reestablish BR's music program. Interest in the program has flourished and student participation is approaching record levels. But since the roof collapsed, the ceiling is quickly caving in. It's great that it has just grown and grown and grown, but with that comes instruments that need to be stored, areas that need to be practiced for practice. Uh, Jamie Lapine started the chorus this year. There were so many kids, they wouldn't fit in her room. Um, we can't really use the um, cafeteria for practice that much because bass is in there after school. Seventh and eighth graders being in separate buildings seldom practice together, creating a huge obstacle for an already vulnerable program. We have seventh graders in one building that need to come over to the high school. They're a little bit reluctant and the eighth graders don't want to go back to the Williams for clubs. So it really has caused a complete, um, you know, break in any continuity of programming we're trying to get going in the after school enrichment area. The music program struggles are shared with the various after school enrichment programs who have realized a decline in participation since the roof collapse. Bridgewater Middle School Principal Lynn Bastoni sees the decline as a real threat to the social emotional well-being of her students. After school enrichment is huge. It may seem like a small thing, but this, this is an age where kids need to be able to explore, try to find their strengths, try to find their niche, and anything you can offer them other than the standard basic courses um, is very, very necessary to their development. The separation of the 7th and 8th grades has also led to a lack of identity within the former middle school. And the kids, they really don't feel like they have any place to belong. Um, they don't feel part of Williams, they don't feel part of the high school. Yet, um, the eighth graders want to be high school kids, but they really don't fit the mold yet. And one thing about middle school is it's such a unique age where the adolescent child needs its own environment because they act goofy. They, you know, they, they just are going through a different stage than high school kids and the expectations can't exactly be the same um, until they reach that age. BMS Assistant Principal Allison Mazzetti identified the environmental concerns. We split a school that's no longer together, right? So there's a few. And having been there many years ago, it's not pleasant. It is challenging. It's, it is. It has its challenges. Well, that's for sure. Trying to be in two places at one time, literally, being in two places at one time, you just can't do it. Um, I think also not getting to know all of the kids that we work with um, as well as we should get to know them. It's hard for me to get to know eighth graders on a personal level um, when I'm not there mm -hmm. more than 50% of the time, if, if even that. So. And academic-wise, bringing middle schoolers back down to mm -hmm. elementary school, has that had any effect on the students at all that you minister? Absolutely. Um, I've worked with middle schoolers for about 15 years, and I can say that Probably I have never seen a more immature group of students, and I think 
part of that is the environment, is being around the younger kids. And I don't think it's necessarily any fault of their own. It just is their environment. So. As we moved to the high school, we discovered that the problems became more academic. Principal Angela Watson reorganized the layout of her building to accommodate the influx of 8th graders, a move resulting in the loss of 11 classrooms, one computer lab, and three science labs. So we lost a significant amount of space. That's a huge impact. High school level curriculum, AP level curriculum, th these kids need to be in, in properly housed science labs. Creative planning allows 8th graders to occupy space in the high school, but they cannot officially be high school students due in part to regional district policies which require Bridgewater and Rainham students to have equal access. So it's not a junior high. It's not an 8th through 12th grade junior high. It's, 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 a, it's a 9th through 12 high school with an 8th grade embedded in it. An 8th grade, no identity. So they, it's like they rent space here. They, they're taking up space. They're not really part of the school, but they're here. You know, and we, in fairness, although we'd love to make them feel more at home, we really can't because now it's not fair to Rainham. And we've gotten feedback from parents that it's just kind of setting up an unfair dynamic in the district where Bridgewater Middle School kids are at least familiar with the building where Rainham Middle School kids are completely unfamiliar. So Bridgewater Middle School kids come in feeling a little bit more at home, which does set up a disparity between the grades. Middle and high school schedules can also clash, creating distractions in the classrooms. Because we're not on the same schedule, every time our kids pass, their kids are in class. It causes a disruption. Every time their kids pass, our kids are in class. It causes a disruption. This, the school was built for well over 1,500 kids. It was meant to have three bathrooms. You limit that to two, the girls' room has almost 11 stalls in it. I've got girls that will line up out the door during passing time because we won't let them use it up here. Fenway Park. Yeah, we're exactly, it's just like Fenway Park, exactly. So we try to prevent them from using this. Right. Sometimes. But then that's taking them out of the classroom. It is, so, so it's, yeah, I don't want to waste 10 minutes, use the bathroom and go back to class. The scheduling conflicts don't stop at bell time. Planning for sports and extracurricular activities has also become a major challenge. And over 50% of our students play sports can no longer go into the gym at the end of the day because the eighth grade has gym class until 2.40. So we need a holding pen for upwards of three, 400 kids. And they can't go outside. I mean, look, it's, it's inclement out today. What would we do with them? Normally they're in the gym. We can't put them in the gym, so they have to be in the cafeteria. So our students are participating in varsity level sports. Well, they have PE class, so they need a place to, to play and, and to, to participate in PE class. We share the same fields now. So that's, that's quite an issue. For many students, the school day continues well into the evening. Many high schools are responsible for their own transportation. There's a huge impact on parking, um, as many parents will probably tell you. We traditionally run out of parking every year, but it's okay because you only have a handful of kids that might, I'm talking four or five kids. We make do until the seniors leave late May, the parking lots open up and everything's great. And we've done that since this is our ninth year in the building. So every year we're here, it always works out pretty nicely. When the middle school had to be housed here, unfortunately, you're looking at almost 40 additional parking spaces that got taken away from our students. These students aren't doing this as a luxury. They're doing it out of a necessity. A lot of them are working at the school or they're playing sports and their parents are either single parents that are working or two parents that are working and... Their school day's not ending at two o'clock. Exactly, their school day is ending at six, seven, eight. If they're involved in drama, you're talking almost 10 o'clock at night. These kids need their cars if they have the cars. Um, also, we're school choice. So a lot of our students at the high school level come out of town and there is no transportation provided so they have to provide their own transportation a lot of those kids will drive so it's really important to try to get them the parking spaces parking and traffic seem to be problems across the district creating safety concerns especially at the mitchell at the middle parents come in and try to find a parking spot in this lovely parking lot that we have and as you can see parents are parked everywhere in spots on the grass on the lawn in non-designated spots um, got three rows deep over there on the grass and as you see parents are now coming through the parking lot with all their kids. So the buses and the children are intermingled because there's no best way to dismiss the kids. First thing I've noticed right off the bat, a lot of vehicles and a lot of small barns. 
Yes, too many bodies navigating through a parking lot um, with moving cars and buses. Principal Heidi Latender gave us a tour inside where we noticed several practical problems. The younger students have faced many obstacles, including the lack of lockers and bathrooms that are not safely configured for the little ones. Another safety concern was found on the staircases where the former high school railings were designed for much larger bodies. Staff have installed temporary covers to prevent students from falling through the rails. The overall size of the building poses another concern as the elementary school students can take up to 15 minutes just to make it across the building. That could be a 15 minute trip, for example, to the nurse's office. The size of the school and the layout of the school is hard for our little people. Um, and then the classroom sizes are small, we don't have the sinks. So, you know, there are a lot of challenges and we only have one gym for 900 students, K to three. And there are three gym classes that go on every day, all throughout the day. The transition to Mitchell at the Middle has left a mark on technology as well. A lot of the classrooms have interactive whiteboards and that's what we had at Mitchell, but the classrooms are so small, we had to then mount all their interactive whiteboards on the walls to because they took up too much space on the floor because the classrooms are so much smaller here. And then that meant the classroom teachers lost bulletin board and whiteboard space where they, they might do some instruction. So everyone has adapted and made it work the best they can, but there still are challenges that people probably don't recognize or hear about on a regular basis. Prior to the construction of the Mitchell School Experts at Town Meeting and other forums cautioned that the elementary school would have potential problems sitting near wetlands. The building experienced mold and other air quality issues long before the collapse, and the experts' warnings were realized during that fateful February vacation. Taxpayers are looking for reassurance that a new investment will not have similar results. School and town officials are hopeful for a brighter future and a permanent solution. The process will begin with a feasibility study if approved by Bridgewater voters. A special election will be held on June 10th. Reporting from BR High School, this is Jeff Fowler for Bridgewater This Week.